Assalamu alaikum. Tonight, inshallah, we will be um, addressing a very important set of questions regarding Laylatul Qadr. So I'm calling this, uh, this uh, segment tonight Laylatul Qadr version 2.0. So inshallah, we will address a few questions that we've received about it. And um, hopefully, this will be very helpful to those who um, need a little bit more explanation on uh, the prior segment that we've done regarding Laylatul Qadr. So here we go. Laylatul Qadr, as you recall, uh, when we defined it in uh, the prior segment, um, and I'll put a link to it down below in the description, uh, Laylatul Qadr is not about the night itself, but about what happens during the night and what you as a believer uh, do to take advantage of that kind of night. And we said it's not just one night, it is a type of night. It's not a single night throughout, uh, you know, one of the nights during the last uh, 10 nights of Ramadan. Now, please be patient and listen. I want you to listen. I know what you think um, and I know what we were ta ta taught. And I used to teach the same thing for over 30 years. But upon examining the Quran, you learn more as you acquire more knowledge and you discover that Allah is a lot more generous and a lot more merciful than we were taught. So I hope this will be helpful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, designates certain nights that you conduct certain activities during these nights. These nights become something very important. If you choose to make these nights important, in other words, the importance of Laylatul Qadr is not the timing, but the actual work that you do during that time, during that night. And as I said in the other segment, there are 365 possible candidates of Laylatul Qadr, not just one. So just hear me out and listen, and I hope that we can uh, converse on this issue. So we said it is the divine guidance, the importance of that type of night is that during that night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals divine guidance directly to us, directly to the person who is engaged in that kind of night. So what happens during that kind of night? Well, you're engaging the Quran in the proper way. And you are not allowing yourself to ascribe to Allah a lesser eminence than is worthy of him. In other words, you hold Allah in high eminence when you read the words, when you read the language, when you read the sentences of the Quran. You don't accept, during your engagement of the Quran, you don't accept um, irrelevant type of interpretations or chauvinistic interpretations. And you don't accept uh, culturally biased type of interpretations, which you find all over the place in the books of Tafsir. And this is, this is key. Furthermore, there is another extremely important condition for any time we engage the Quran and deal with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us to not have any shirk so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects with us directly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ Allah does not forgive, in another translation, does not connect with anyone who commits shirk with him, commit, commits association with him. In other words, you don't take Allah to be the only, you know, the, the only connection and supporter we ha you have. Allah has no obligation to support you and give you the guidance. It's very simple. So that type of engagement that you conduct during the night of, uh, the night of Laylatul Qadr, the type of night it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the direct guidance that he promised us all throughout the Quran. So that's the definition. Now, some people did not like my translation and they prefer Laylatul Qadr being translated as the night of power. I researched this extensively. I looked far and wide and deep throughout the Quran. I could not find any justification for calling it the night of power. Now, do you have any evidence to support a claim that Al-Qadr means power? If you do, please bring it out because I could not find any. And I went back to the Quran and I looked throughout the Quran for my guidance. 
and I found that this translation right here, which is a lengthy one, but very relevant and explanatory one, if you don't like it, bring something better. We would, we would learn from you, inshallah. But hopefully, this will be uh, a, good, a good background on this issue. Now, some people objected that I said Laylatul, Laylatul Qadr could be any night of the year. And here I want you to please um, consider the following. During, in, in Surat Al-Qadr, which we read in the first segment on this issue, and we translated as I described before, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says that some people are promised rewards during that one night that are worth more than 1,000 months. Now the word shahr, shahr in Arabic um, sounds like the word shahr which means month, but it's actually derived from the root shahara which means to expose which means to proclaim. So it sounds exactly the same as the word for month, but it could mean a, a something totally different. So in Arabic, even according to our methodology, two words that sound the same, even written the same, may mean different things. Like in English, you can say bear, that means somebody who's not dressed, he's bear. Or you can say bear, meaning I, 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 I cannot bear it. And it's a verb, right? They're written exactly the same thing, but they're, they're, or they sound the same way, but they mean different things, and that's possible in all languages. So that's, that's one aspect of this. But, but there's something very important. If you're so impressed with 1,000 months, that's fine, but know that there are some people promised much more, much more than this in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises certain people um, and I'm not going to go through the detail because we're limited on time. In Surah Al-Baqarah 2.12 Wallahu yarzuku man yasha'u bighayri hisab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants sustenance to whoever seeks it. Man yasha'u meaning whoever seeks such sustenance and such rewards with no limits. Bighayri hisab No limits. So forget 1,000 months. You want 1 million months? You can seek it. You can ask for it. You can work for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that he will give you this. It is not just 1,000. Why limit it to 1,000? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much more generous than this. And this is the beauty of this interpretation that, that Laylatul Qadr is a type of night, type of engagement where you sit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entertaining or engaging his words. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you the rewards that are limitless in their uh, amount, in their quantity. Don't be miserly when it comes to Allah. Allah is not limited to even 1,000 months. The Quran is much more generous than this. And this is repeated, by the way, in verse 337 and 2438. Here's another category. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّى hisab. Those who are patient. And the context, by the way, is patience in interpreting the Quran. It's not rushing the interpretation of the Quran. Those who are patient receive their rewards with no bounds, with no limits. Whatever you think you're going to get, you will get. Allah is even more generous than this. So 1,000 months in the accounting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing. It's, it's not, it's not uh, the upper bound. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in the Quran much more than this. So please open your mind to the, to the worth or the eminence that is worthy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't limit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this, these limited interpretations. Now, another concept is Allah tells us that he's near. He, he talks about he's near anytime we seek him, anytime. So here's a question. If someone, if someone um, says that this is a unique night and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the equivalent of 1,000 months, well, what happens if you're not lucky, if you're not lucky and you don't hit that night, you don't hit the lottery for that night, what happens? Do you miss out on all the deeds that you've, you've worked on that night? Of course not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more generous than you give him credit. And he, he doesn't need to wait for one specific you know, check mark on the calendar to give you that reward. It is not about a lottery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can choose to give you what you seek and what you work on 
any night. They, there is no limitation on Allah's bounty. Now, um, we ask another question. Muslims spend the night of Laylatul Qadr whenever they decide to do so, 27th or the 23rd or whatever I said, like I said before, and they may guess it and they may not guess it. Well, what happens if they do the same kind of work on any other night during the, the year? Any other night, choose a night and you give yourself uh, a, a promise that you're going to conduct the same kind of activities you do, but you do it on another night. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not going to give you the reward for those deeds, for that work? Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that arbitrary? Oh, you didn't miss, you, you missed the specific check mark I put on the calendar and therefore I'm not going to give you the reward? Come on. I'll, I'll give Allah his due worth. This is what we're talking about. Allah is much more generous than this. Allah is much, much more present and alive and with you than you give him credit for. Like, he, like we said before, Allah does not do lottery. Allah does not choose an arbitrary night and says, ah, there is a sale today. And, uh, forgive me, I'm using these expressions to sort of approximate the topics. I'm not trying to belittle anybody's opinion or anybody's uh, concern. But, but we need to understand the Quran and give or ascribe to Allah the worth or the eminence that is worthy of him. Finally, I want to tell you a couple of things. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that there is such a night. And I would be the first one to tell you, yes, he did. He did say this, absolutely. But he never said this is the only night in the whole year. He never said this. You guys went and interpreted this and made a whole event for it and created programs and wanted to you know, deprive people of the opportunity to seek such, an, uh, such a grant or such a you know, reward from Allah on other nights. That's their problem. Don't fall for that trap. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much more generous than just one night in a year. Anyway, in, 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 um, in some cases, people think that Allah is miserly and he only gives such rewards on one night. I choose to believe that Allah is much more generous than this and much more generous than 1,000 months, which they claim, and much more generous than to give us such rewards on one single night. Last but not least, I want to tell you to beware people who reject who reject the claim that I make that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us direct guidance when we engage the Quran. Please go back and read the Quran and seek such direct guidance. And don't listen to anyone who says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is silent. They want Allah to be silent so that they can speak on his behalf. They want Allah to be silent and not talk to you and not speak to you and not have you look for such direct guidance because they want the so-called predecessors who died 1200 and 1300 years ago to speak on Allah's behalf. We don't accept this. We believe that Allah is living. Allah is with us all the time and Allah will guide us whenever we ask for it. Choose that connection with Allah. Try it. Believe in it and you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a lot nearer than some people want us to believe. Um, finally, you know, I, I want to make sure you understand when I give you these new ideas or these, these ideas that are closer to the Quran, I'm not trying to uh, make it hard for anyone. It is my mission to tell you what you need to know, not just what you enjoy hearing, not just what you want to hear. So I hope you accept and I hope you reflect and I hope you apply some of the ideas and the concepts that we're talking about in, this, uh, in these uh, segments, in this series. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts and to grant us the direct guidance that he promised us all throughout the Quran. Thank you very much for paying attention and for listening. Assalamu alaikum.